Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and it is Friday. First, before we get to the basket of blooms, let me tell you, I have a little uh, update, <laughs> update on the Go Dyes. The Go Dyes, uh, several of you who use a lot of dyes mentioned that I forgot to uh, align my fabric with the dye. So let me just show you. I was just putting the fabric down, not thinking, but this uh, dies are shifted. You see like they're rotated slightly rather than being straight on. So when I did my fabric for the demo, I just put it straight on, which meant that when it cut it, it cut it slightly, you know, just slightly off grain. So you want to align it. See there, now I just have it aligned. This die is not shifted that much. My blocks actually turned out just fine, uh, but this is the way it's intended to work. And I was just, Super excited to show you and forgot to rotate them when I laid it down. So there you go. Want to give you a little update on that so you know the proper way. Okay, Basket of Blooms is the Friday project and I did nothing since last Friday on it. <laughs> so I have, still have three, three darling flowers and a basket. Ta-da! And so now I want to get the leaves and basically working this week, I want to cut up all of the border units. I want to get these raspberry red border units here cut and get those all made up. And in the meantime, I'll probably try to set the inside of it. So really just working on all of that during the week, but I have to go, I need to get it all cut first. Let's talk about leaves before we talk about those little units out there. Well, actually, let's talk about fabric first. There are, you know, some bigger pieces in here and we are using, and they are small. This is a small uh, quilt uh, and the patchwork is a little bit smaller patchwork. So if you want, before you do any more cutting or if you've not, if you've not tried this yet, you might want to starch it to get it a little bit firmer because the squares that we're working with are pretty small. So that's what I did. I want to get that. So it's a little crisper and that way it doesn't bend as much as I'm stitching it. Like when you're going, uh, you know, have a starched piece, it has a little more, more firmness, you know, than a soft piece without any starch. So I find that it's kind of nice for this small patchwork to have it starched. Okay, let's look at the leaves and how I'm thinking about this so that I do it the way I want it done. Uh, I laid the leaves out just like they are on the picture. Here's this top one, here's this bottom one, which on my particular bottom one, I think it has more strawberries looking down. So I made this a directional print uh, for me so that I made the one that the, the, the direction of the leaf, the bottom of it is where the more strawberries look to the bottom. So that's just how I thought about it. And then here's the leaf on the other side. Now there's a big square and a small square and you can see on the, um, the unit here, the inside, what's closest to where the stem will be are the big squares and then the little squares are just opposite of it. So I have this all laid out here so that I don't get it mixed up. This would be so easy to flip it or get it confused. Uh, and then especially this, these two are directional. Like I want the leaf, you know, that, that way rather than, you know, sideways. So this keeps me on track, having it on the design board here. Now this is the border unit and that will also be with sew and flip. That's why I was saying you might want to starch it. Uh, that might help you out. So the directions are quite good and you can see, you know, all the sew and flip things that have to happen. So there's a bit of that. We'll see how much I get done this week, getting all of those, uh, getting all of those made uh, and try to get the, try to get the center, try to get the center sewn with the stem and then the little border units all done. Maybe not sewn together, but get them all done. So I think that's a good goal to get through this week. So what else did I do? I sewed up more of the crumbs that were left over from the, uh, the Wednesday block. So now, and then I added in the orange from the spooky sampler. See, 
I added those in there because I thought, hey, that looks really good. That pop of orange in there looks super with that blue and black. So I don't have a whole lot more of these scraps. Um, actually, I'm thinking this is it. I think that, yeah, I think I used it all. So there we go. That is as big as this one gets with that fabric. And so now I'll hold it. You know, maybe, it, maybe it'll be part of the label, something like that. I'm not sure really what I'll do with it. I'm going to put it in the crumb bin, my collection of all of these things sewn from the crumbs and the strips. So I will go ahead and put it in that bin so I don't lose it because I'm sort of I want it because my goal with these is for this full year is to be sewing up all that stuff so I can actually see how much is it what you know what does that look like sewn up you know I'm really curious because there's quite a bit of it still that I haven't even sewn yet all those strips in that tub but I've digressed <laughs> okay let's go to spooky hollow I quilted it quilted the top top of the pillow so there is the orange pop of orange just like the little pumpkin girl and I went through my bin because when I quilt this I prefer to have cotton behind it so I went through and just found a piece of fabric that was big enough that I thought you know what I've had this a long time I haven't used it so now it's the back of the pillow oh, you could use just white but you know I have this other stuff why not and it, I didn't have to really trim much. I trimmed a little bit that went into the crumb stuff and the string stuff. So I used the wave stitch and I, and I went across. So that's what I was doing. Here's the back again so you can see. And I think it just turned out super cute. I'll trim it and I'm not quilting the back part of the pillow, but I'll make the backing. I have enough of this gray, so I'll make the backing of the pillow with that. Put that on the list. I still haven't done any more documenting on my quilts, by the way. And I know somebody wrote a note out there asking me how was I going to store those quilts that I'm documenting. It makes me think of it because once I finish that pillow, then that's a finish and I need to put it up there. And I'm behind on putting things in the gallery that got finished uh, in the last like two months, which isn't really that much that's actually finished. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody asked, I forget, maybe it was Kathy, um, who, you know, how was I going to store my quilts? And basically, I'm still going to store my quilts on shelves. That's where they're going to be when this is finished. I've always stored them on shelves. Uh, I don't really want to install any other kind of storage in my home. So that is what they'll be. They'll be shelves and they'll be nicely stacked, very neatly folded, unlike the pictures you saw. Um, I, I have I will neatly fold them, fold them so they have a be very beautiful edge on them and look really nice uh, as more like a display you know which just means you know they all have to be folded exactly the same size or very close so that they they lay in there super nice so that's that's how I will do it okay I had a few other things I wanted to show you because I've been walking to the grocery store a bunch I treated myself to a cute little bag to walk over to the grocery store and get groceries whoops so oh it comes in a bag comes in a bag isn't that cute <laughs> if you have any buddy in your family like maybe uh, young children that might like this kind of tote maybe they have it for you know put it on their teddy bear can have it on their arm or they can use it as a little purse wouldn't that be cute so here I got this reusable tote so I just I thought I needed something cute to take over to the grocery store and I'll link you down below you can get one of these I think they come in two different styles they're very light and they're very strong I have a friend who has one and just loves it so I was like ah I'm gonna get one I'm gonna have something cute to go to the grocery store in and walk walk home my groceries <laughs> hey you got to do what you got to do and while you're down there below click the subscribe button for me Mwah. That'll let you know when my new videos come out and we can be friends. Okay, the other thing I got, which I keep right next to, right here next to my machine, on the bed of the machine, I like to keep a little cutting mat. And my friend Joanna created a cutting mat that has a peach side and a green side. So I don't know if I can get this open while we're sitting here. But anyways. I'm going to open it later, but I got this in and it just came in and I'm going to keep it down here because I think that looks really pretty uh, and I can put my scissors on it 
and I put other things there that I'm working with so that I can, they don't sort of scratch the surface of my machine. So there you go. And I have one more thing, my friend Beverly's fabric. I had to get some of Beverly's fabric. She was on my tour, uh, Beverly of Flamingo Toes. Remember the Flamingo uh, opener from the Sew Sampler box? That Beverly. <laughs> she does darling, darling stuff. Let's take a look at her fabric. This one is called Fair, Fairy Dust? No, Stardust. Stardust. Sounds like we should be in Palm Springs or something. Okay, so here we go. I'm just going to open it. We'll see what all is in here. The colors are so summery. I love it. If you have not started the home is yet, I mean, I'm sorry, if you've not started summer soiree, this would be a gorgeous summer soiree. Look at that floral. I'm a sucker for roses. Just love them. And she's got some dots. And then here is our stardust. See, look at that. The little bit of gold. <gasps> look, I didn't know she had this in there. Look, the pink flamingos and the shells. Look at that. This is so cute. Then more dots in a little darker shade of pink with glasses. <laughs> you can tell I just I just ordered it, you know? <laughs> like I'm like it's it's Beverly's fabric. I just have to order it. Now I love this pop of gold, which she's got a little bit of that gold down in the main floral. There's the stardust again. Or fair what did I say it was called? Yeah, stardust. Then she has the big print and the main print rather in blue and then you can get flamingos and glasses in the blue so i think this would be a darling summer soiree just super cute look at this and then she has it on the light ah i love supporting my friends they are so amazing they do great things more on the white and then some green which goes with the green in the leaves the glasses and the dots and the shells i think the shell print is amazing that would be a cute pillow just using the shell print okay there we go that's my that's my haul for today <laughs> okay we're going to we're going to make we're going to make stuff to finish this and I know some of you have just zoomed ahead because it's easy enough. I know a few people are just going to put borders on. They're not going to do the scalloped edge, but I really like the scalloped edge. So I'm doing that. I love you. Mwah. See you online.